Another point that Dr. Jerry Walls made is that, that hell, the traditional uh, model of hell, has always been a teaching from the beginning of Christ to today. It's been a teaching of the church. That's simply not true. Uh, the early church did not teach the kind of concept of hell that the church taught in the Dark Ages, nor in the Reformation, nor in modern contemporary evangelicalism. This teaching of hell that we have today, where did it come from? It originated from senators, Roman senators and Greek senators and Egyptian uh, princes and kings who used the, the concept of everlasting punishment on the other side of the grave to hold people in check. They used it as a means of power to hold people in fear and to keep them in ignorance. And on the Tentmaker website and on the whatthehellishell.com website, you'll see the, the, uh, the, the uh, URLs for that on the screen there. If you go to those sources, you'll d discover several quotes from the early ancient philosophers and poets, and they will tell you who invented the concept of hell. Powerful men you hold, using the concept of fear to hold people in uh, in check, they are the ones who invented the concept of hell. The early Jews, the Jews of the Bible, they never taught it. You'll never find hell in the Old Testament in any new translations today. And the early church fathers didn't teach it, and neither did Jesus or his apostles. Now what you just saw right there in that clip was a false doctrine taught by Gary Amaralt. He was a false prophet. He believed in universalism. Gary Amaralt denied the doctrine of hell. He did not believe that there was a literal place of hell. And he says that the early church did not teach about hell. Now, let me remind you, this is the same false prophet that when you go to his YouTube channel, he has a picture of him uh, donning an LGBTQ flag, when knowing that God is against the sin of homosexuality. We know that he's a compromiser and that he is just being ecumenical. And just, you know, acting like we need to be accepting of sin and be tolerant of sin. Uh, God is against the sin of homosexuality. So we see some red flags already with this man. Now, let me also uh, make this very clear. Jesus taught about hell. In Matthew chapter 10, verse number 28, the Bible says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Rather, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And that's Jesus preaching. Jesus said, you know, don't fear them that kill the body. Don't fear them that kill you physically. He said, fear him that can kill both body and soul. And Jesus is talking about how God sends people to hell. God destroys you physically, but he can also destroy you spiritually. He will send your soul to a place called hell. The Bible talks about the second death. And so God tells us to fear him. And that's literal. God is not talking in a figurative sense. He's speaking in a literal sense when he talks about the place of hell and how God uh, destroys people with hellfire. Now, that's not popular preaching, but that's what the Bible says. And we see Gary Emerald is being a liberal, a softy. He doesn't like the fact that God uh, judges people and condemns people for sin and that God sends people to hell. That's too offensive to him, apparently. But the Bible is the truth. The Bible is the word of God. And any false prophet that denies hell and twists the scripture to say we need to be tolerant and accept all false religion, then he is a demonic false prophet. We should not listen to someone like that. Now, there is another passage of scripture that talks about hell, and it features Jesus. Jesus is preaching about hell in this other passage of scripture. In Matthew chapter 18, the Word of God says in Matthew chapter 18, verse number 9, it says, And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Again, that's literal. Jesus is saying there are people who are cast into a literal hellfire. He's talking about the bottomless pit. He's talking about the lake of fire. Those who are not saved will end up in a place called hell if they don't believe in Jesus for salvation. And I'm going to make this very clear. Jesus often preached about hell in the Bible. And he never compromised, never went soft on the sermon of hell. He always preached about the subject of hell. That was his number one sermon topic. Yes, Jesus taught on other things, important doctrines, but for the most part, he preached about hell. And there's a reason, because Jesus wanted people to be saved, and we 
should also want people to be saved. In Luke chapter 16, this is a very famous passage about hell in the Bible. In Luke chapter 16, in verse number 19, we'll start there. And you can turn there if you like, if you have a Bible. The Bible says in verse 19, there was a rich, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So we have an actual story. This is not a parable. Jesus is talking about uh, real people here because he mentions names. Parables don't mention names. Parables are just spiritual lessons that Jesus uses to illustrate a spiritual lesson. But here, Jesus is talking about um, real actual people. He mentions Lazarus. Lazarus is a beggar. He's poor. He's desiring food from the rich man. And obviously, the rich man is a wealthy man, one who's living a lavish lifestyle. He doesn't care. He's just all about himself. But notice what happens. In verse 22, the Bible says, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. The word of God tells us that the rich man died and went to hell for rejecting Christ. He was not saved. He didn't believe in the promise of the Messiah. He ended up going to hell. Lazarus, on the other hand, went to heaven. It says that he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And I believe that's Abraham's literal bosom. He's not talking about uh, what many Baptists teach, you know, this doctrine of paradise or the doctrine of Abraham's bosom, which they believe was a place in the Old Testament that the Christians and the believers went to uh, because they didn't believe that heaven was available to the saints in the Old Testament. They believe people did not go to heaven until the New Testament when Jesus died on the cross and made the atonement. That's false doctrine. People did go to heaven in the Old Testament. Elijah was one of them. Uh, other characters in the Bible, uh, it says that they literally went to heaven after they died. So that's a whole nother sermon in itself. But here we see that Jesus is preaching about hell. And it says in verse 24, And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So the rich man was tormented in hell. This is literal. He was so tormented. He was suffering agony. That's what that word torment means. Uh, he was in agony. He was suffering pain, excruciating pain. And he wanted uh, Abraham to dip water into his tongue. But that's how hot hell is. It's a burning fire at the center of the earth. In fact, uh, the book of Jonah uh, talks about Jesus. I believe in chapter 2 it says that Jonah went into the well's belly for three days and three nights. And he was suffering in pain there. And basically, it's a picture of Jesus when he went to hell for three days and three nights. I believe Christ went to hell for our sins because he took our sin upon himself. And so, again, it is very clear from the Bible that hell is a place of torment. It's a place of suffering. This is a real place that is found at the heart of the earth, the earth's core. Revelation chapter 20, in verse number 14. Revelation chapter number 20. In verse number 14, the Bible says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So, that's talking about the lake of fire, which is ten times worse than hell itself. There's hell, which is the bottomless pit, and then there's the lake of fire, which comes after that. It comes uh, after the white throne judgment. So those who are not saved, those who do not believe on Christ, when the white throne judgment takes place, they will be cast into the lake of fire, which is much worse than hell. And again, lake of fire, that's a literal place. It's talking about a place of torment and anguish, a place of a burning fire that never ends. So Jesus clearly preached about hell. And yes, even the apostles preached about hell. Because in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that Peter preached about the prophecy of Jesus going down to hell 
after dying on the cross for our sins. After the resurrection of Christ, Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost, and he said that Jesus would, again, his soul would go to hell for us for three days and three nights. He suffered for us, and he was in agony. And so Peter once again preached about hell in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, because he said that the angels that sinned were cast down to hell and delivered into chains of darkness. The Word of God tells us that one day these fallen angels will be judged as well. Even the Apostle Paul preached about hell and judgment in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7-9. through 9, Paul was talking about how uh, those who do not know God will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. It says that God will take vengeance in flaming fire against those who do not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the false prophet Gary Amaral claims that hell was a doctrine that the pagans and the Roman emperors invented in order to strike fear among their own people. Now, yes, the heathens did teach about hell. And yes, the pagans also stole from the Bible. That's why they taught hell. But they were not the ones who invented it. They stole it from the Bible. I don't have time to get into it, but if you study mythology, most of mythology borrows from the biblical creation story and other Christian teachings, but mixed with paganism. A lot of people accuse the Bible of borrowing from pagan myths, but that's not true. Pagan myths stole from the Word of God, which I'll talk about in the future. He also says that the Old Testament Jews never taught about hell. And that is a blatant lie from the pit of hell. Because Deuteronomy 32.22, which is the first passage in the Bible that talks about the word hell and the subject of hell, it talks about a fire kindled in God's wrath. It also mentions in the latter half of the verse that it will burn into the lowest hell. Yes, the Jews did preach and teach about hell in the Old Testament. That debunks the lies of Gary Amaral. The Bible mentions in number 16 the story of Korah and how he and his men were swallowed up by the earth and then brought down to the pit. That is talking about hell. God judged them for turning against the man of God, Moses, and they did go to hell. You may be asking, what is universalism? Universalism is a doctrine that teaches that all men will be saved. Universalism says that a loving God would not send people to hell. Some universalists even teach that there are many ways to God, and that is a damnable heresy. We know that God judges people based on their sin. God is going to judge the unsaved according to the law. That's what the law is there for. Catholicism and universalism are both one and the same. Why? Because the word Catholic does mean universal. This is why the Pope is constantly pushing for one world religion. Now, as a Baptist, I do believe that Christ died for all men. I am not a Calvinist. I do not believe in this idea of God picking and choosing who goes to heaven and who doesn't. I believe Christ died for all men. The atonement is universal. However, Hebrews 2.9 says that Jesus tasted death for every man. That is a fact. I am not disagreeing with that. Second Peter 3.9 says that God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Amen to that. Praise the Lord. Christ wants all men to be saved. However, just because Jesus died for all men, that does not mean that people automatically go to heaven when they die. A person must believe in Jesus Christ to be saved, to receive eternal life. John 3.16 says that if we believe in Christ, we shall never perish but have everlasting life. The word believe in this context means to trust in or to rely upon. We must choose to depend on the gospel of Jesus for our salvation. We can't trust in our good deeds or some other way or we can't be saved. The Bible says in John 3.36 that if a person chooses not to believe in Christ, the wrath of God abideth on him. They remain dead in their sins and trespasses until they decide to trust in Christ for their salvation, for their eternity. Now it's obvious that Gary Amaralt was teaching a bunch of crap not found in the Bible, and that's what it is. It's crap. For him to teach that all men can go to heaven even if they don't receive Jesus as their Savior is like saying Judas Iscariot went to heaven, and he didn't. John 17, 12 tells us that Judas Iscariot was called the son of perdition, and he was the same man who betrayed Jesus Christ. This same Bible verse reveals to us that he was lost. He was not saved. He went to hell. He was never saved to begin with. Why? Because he really didn't believe in Christ for salvation. He was a reprobate and an infiltrator. You might be wondering, are universalists saved? 
No, they're not. Why? Because they are not trusting in Christ for their salvation. They believe they're already going to heaven automatically without him, just because Jesus already died for all of humanity. And that is not salvation. Yes, Christ died for the whole world, but you need to receive his atonement by faith, or else you can't be saved. The fact that they believe that there are many ways to get to God shows that they are not saved. Christ said in John 14, 6, that he is the only way to the Father. Without Christ, you can't make it to heaven. Christ is the only mediator. Christ is the only door. There's no other door but Christ. Now, as far as Gary Amaralt and his eternity, he was not saved. He didn't believe in a literal hell, nor did he believe that Christ was the only way to the Father. He was a false prophet. He was a false teacher. And you can huff and puff all you want. I'm telling you the truth, because according to John 3.16 and John 3.36, this man was not saved. He went to hell. Christians, listen up. Stay away from universalism. Let's keep preaching against it. Because this is the religion that the Antichrist will set up one day in the Great Tribulation. And many people will be deceived. Many people will worship the Antichrist. Listen, we need to keep preaching against ecumenicalism and show people that they need Jesus to be saved. That there's not more than one way to heaven, but that Christ is the only way. God bless you all. In Jesus' name.